All right. Hey, guys, we are live. This is Coach Nate. That's me with the Blade Fit Academy. And this is Student Zane with the Blade Fit Academy. Student Z or Zane with the Blade Fit Academy. Um, and I have to say, uh, guys, this class today is going to be amazing. We are going to go over shield techniques. Um, the problem with shields is it's not, um, you can't score points with the shield, right? And so we have been limited in our, in our training and in describing how to use the shield in, in different formats. So let me just tell you the new strategy of how uh, we are going to attain rank uh, using this as our framework and then we train in that and then you will qualify for your rank as you practice and get, get better at these things, okay? So let me set the table. We have strategies, right? And we have tactics, all right? So what is the difference between a strategy and a tactic? Zane, what is the difference? So a strategy, speak loud. A strategy is the intent of your shield work. The tactic is how you're using your shield to accomplish that. Okay, so pretty good. So uh, in general, a strategy is your objective, your big picture of what you want accomplished. And your tactic is at the granular level of how you achieve those objectives, right? And so um, shield work, that's, you could do certain things and they would be under different strategies, right? So our three strategies for shield work is one, we have covers. Two, we have counters. And three, we have attacks. Now in MSF rules, shield attacks do not accumulate points, do they? They do not. However, it doesn't negate the fact that you can attack with your shield for a strategic purpose, which is winning the match, right? Um, and so there is such a thing as a shield attack as a strategy. Now, let's talk about the, let's talk about the tactics, right? The granular, the motions, the actions, what to do, okay? The six tactics, Number one is the blocks, right? Blocking the line of attack from your opponent. Two, we have a hook, right? Three, we have a wing or a barn door. It's the same thing, different names, two different names. Four, we have traps. And uh, uh, you know what? What the heck? I've got four and six. I must have been... You must have been tired. I must have been, I don't know what I was doing. Number five left the page. The number five uh, tactic is what's called the peekaboo, okay? So, uh, and we'll show you what all that is uh, actually right now. So the, so the first thing is um, we're gonna gear up, right? So it's been a while since a lot of you have seen uh, gear. So we're gonna gear up here. We're not gonna get too crazy, but it's just so you could see what MSF gear looks like. For those of you who uh, don't know what modern sword fighting is, Now's a chance for you to, we wanted to show off our, our gear here. So Zane's got his helmet. The nice thing about these helmets are, is that they're very breathable, okay? Because we, um, we do a lot of things in modern sword fighting. One of those things is we do continuous fighting, okay? We assume armored combat, right? Because our, our big brother is, uh, is a HMB or a, a Buhurt. Really, HMB is a, is a special kind of Buhurt, but... Um, it could also be I IMCF, right? Um, but MSF is sort of a the little brother. It's the soft kit version of those things of, of Boo Herd, right? That's, that's its bread and butter where it came from. But MSF also works as a prep or a, a complementary with HEMA uh, as well. And so some of the competitions, uh, the rule sets are more like HEMA, and some of them are more like Boo Herd rules. Um, and so you need specialized gear to help you uh, accomplish all of that. So uh, really quickly, the helmet here, you can see it's an open grill. Uh, that's because of the, the weapons that we use. Uh, there are only specialized weapons that you can thrust with, right? It's the curved saber. Uh, all other straight swords, uh, st um, thrusting is forbidden. Um, and that is because in Boo Hurt, you may not thrust with your weapon. Um, different rule sets. But... With the sabers, we can, and that's where we can get to more into HEMA-like things. But anyway, um, so the helmet is really nice. It's got a, a second crown here. Um, it's got pads underneath. Um, it's, uh, you could see a lot. It's got sort of this neck protection here. 
it's a really nice helmet for what it is and uh, I love these things and so you, you could breathe quite a bit so I'm gonna put mine on here you are gonna want for MSF you are gonna want some hand protection we're gonna want some knee protection you are gonna wear some kind of groin protection um, uh, center mass uh, guard it's it's nice to have guys especially uh, myself as a coach, day in, day out, getting hit, it's uh, its not fun. So It stings. It stings. It, it's, it doesn't hurt damage, but it stings. That's right. Um, so it, it just kind of makes things nice because we are hitting each other a lot. In competition, certainly you're going to want to cover your elbows because people hit harder. Okay, so let me grab my shield. First off, the block. There's a lot of misinterpreting of uh, how to hold the shield for just a, sta a static block. Just give me a tent. Just be in tent guard. Show the camera. Good. Okay, so that's high tent, but it is, yeah, and that's tent. So we can see here with his shield, what is he not doing? He is not covering flat like this, is he? He is not doing that. <laughs> because you can't, you can't do that again. He can't see. He can't see his opponent. So, okay, now face me, Zane. So put your shield down really quick. We have to move fast. So if I'm coming for his head, what he does not want to do is cover his eyes with the shield flat, right? And the simple reason for that is that if I see him like that, I know now he can't see me, and now I'm going to just switch my trajectory and hit him in the leg, okay? That's bad for Zane. So Zane, uh, show me the proper technique again, right? I, like, like this. Now some people say, oh, but he's open. Well, look, the sword is not in the middle of my body. The sword is on the right of my body. So as I go to strike... His shield is max. His angle of shield is at maximum angle to deflect my blow. Now he's in high uh, tent right there, so just come like mid tent right there. See, I mean he can move his shield really quickly and easily to cover that line. Now, um, another thing is, so I'm, I'm like this, right? This is a great way to get my feet the right way. Right here, this angle. This is a great angle for your shield. Now, if someone tries to hit me on my right side, on the viewer's left side, there's a very easy way of covering that attack. And that is just raising your shield a little bit more, either forward or just to the side, just a bit, just to cover my center line, just a bit. And the reason why that's so effective is in face me, okay, do that. If I want to hit him on this side, he totally just covered himself. He doesn't have to be chasing my shield and my sword everywhere with his shield all he has to do is just extend it out past this mid midline boom it's kind of comical how easy it is it's kind of comical how easy it is it's very simple once you understand the principle right that's it that's all he's got to do so if i hit him here he can block if i hit him here boom there you go you do not need and you do not want to hold your shield flat to be able to do all that okay it's bogus and it's wrong it's not a piece of armor okay yeah so that's that is the block right simple okay now another component to that is guys when you um camera can you see our feet yeah. in in the other camera too mm -hmm. this one, yeah. okay so uh feet to cover the feet right you want to cover your legs too your shield can't be everywhere at once so if they do come in low right uh, you, you don't want your, see this is my shield foot, this is my sword foot. I do not want my shield foot planted under my shield. Because, okay, so do that Zane, do it wrong. Right? So he's there, and sure, I can come here. So now, switch feet. Now if he, he leads with sword foot, okay, now I can't reach his leg. Right? Now put your shield out like, like a normal defense, right? His shield is out. When I'm striking at him, his shield is out, right? So if I'm doing that, his shield is out. He, I can't, I don't have room to get him. I can get his head, okay? Well, use your shield. I can get his head, but I can't get his leg. It's because he's leading with his sword foot forward. So sword foot is forward, your shield is here, and that's covering this whole line of attack here. And I can also use it to cover the line of attack from the other side by just moving it out slightly and to the side. I don't even have to go out here, it's just a bit, right? To cover, do it, to cover attack from his other side, okay? So, we, we, we're running out of time, we're going through all five uh, tactics. So that's the first one, right? That's the most inert use of shield too. Just covering the line of attack, 
just blocking as the lines as the as the hits come. All right. Second tactic is the hook. And when I say hook, I mean hook, right? I'm hooking with my shield, okay? I'm hooking, see here's my center line, I'm hooking. And the reason why I do that, so if I am fighting with Zane, I want to hook, I'm fighting for, his, for access to his inside line, right? So I want to hook. So either I can hook just his shield, or better yet, okay, like, yeah. So, or better yet, I can hook his sword and his shield, or I could hook his sword, right? I hook it so that I can do something else, right? I'm fighting for access to his inside line. That is a hook. So I'm gonna be in what's called tent, and Zane is gonna do a hook. Good. Now, another thing is with the hook, don't wind out, don't, don't wind to do it, just kind of like, it's like a jab, right? Oh, just you jab okay. and you're hooking, okay? Let me try again. Yes, see, boom, and he just got me. It happens that fast, okay? So that is a hook. You could do a high, you could do a low. Now, a word of caution, if you're doing a hook high, you have to make sure that you don't block your vision. If you're doing it high, you better be moving your, your view, right? And you don't want to be like this, okay? You still want to be able to see your opponent at all times. So if you do a high hook, like you, you better be like shifting over to your left, and not having the shield still in front of you, okay? You can do a low hook, you can do a mid hook, you can do a high hook, okay? Moving on. The next one is the opposite direction, and we call that a barn door or a wing, right? The reason why we call it a wing is it kind of looks like a wing, right? Um, and I don't want it way out here when I activate this. I just want it here. And I better cover, if, if, my, if I'm winging way out here, I better cover my inside line with my sword, okay? So, if we're straight on each other, right, it might be better if I do a hook. But if I'm slightly on this side of him, right, if he's on my left, a wing just might be what I need. So I can wing to hit, right? I can wing and hit. Or just like with your sword, just put your sword out, and I wing his sword, and come in, and I split the difference between his sword and his shield. That's all I need to do, wing. Okay, it's not a big thing sometimes. Most of the time it's just a little action that gives you that split second so that you can get in there and score a point, right? So that's wing. The next thing is, number three, no, excuse me. So we talked blocks, hooks, wings. The next one is what we call, what time is it? Okay, we're running out of time. The next one what we call is a trap. We want to trap things with our shields, okay? So, Zane, if you would, intent please. So he's there, I'm here, okay? We're both under, in, we're both covering, right? So, if I want to trap, let's say Zane, throw me a, a, a high number one. Boom, I'm trapped, not only am I blocking, I am now actively Aggressive. Aggressive to his hit. I step forward, I put my shield, and I am pinning his, his hand, his arm, with my shield. I am trapping his sword. I'm trapping his sword arm. He cannot get me. And that buys me a lot more time. It knocks him off balance, and then I can come in and do some things, right? So uh, I could give him a tulip and come. There's lots of different things I could do with a trap. Now, I could trap his sword. Back in tent, please. I could also trap his shield. See how I did that? I trapped his shield, and then I could hit him there. Then they have to do some fancy footwork to get out. That's right. Then they have to do some fancy footwork. So you could trap their sword. You could trap their shield, okay? Now, there's also something called a high trap, right? Um, so Zane, uh, give me... Uh, be in tent, or excuse me, house, house. So he's in house right now, his sword is high. So now you have to be careful of this because in MSF rules, you cannot shield punch. A shield punch is when you actually punch somebody with the edge of your shield. You cannot do that, right? Um, you, cannot, you cannot punch him, but I could trap his sword. I certainly can. I could trap his sword from a, from a high trap, right? High trap and smack him. As long as my shield does not make contact with his helmet and the edge especially, I'm okay. I'm good. 
But if he's winding up like this for a strike, and you can come in there and you trap, you could trap him up here. And then you could do what you need to do. Also, make sure you don't see the trap coming, otherwise they might be able to put their sword in the gap. So that's why it's super important. Yes, yes, that's right. So that's why it's super important to get the proper uh, technique for developing a heart strike with your arm without winding up. You don't want to be winding up. Okay, you don't want to be winding up. If you're doing that, a trap, someone who understands trapping will trap you. Okay, you don't want to do that. Now, um, yeah, you know what? There are six things. You know why? Because I left one thing out on this copy. I knew there were six things. Pushing. Okay? The push. So, now, like I said, you cannot shield punch, but you can push. So, Zane, be strong, okay, in intent. So, what I can do is I can make contact with the surface of my shield and I can push. Okay? I can make a consistent pushing for two seconds. No more than that, right? So if he's close to the to the edge, right? If he's close to the to the boundary of the um, of the uh, arena, I can push him out. I can push with my shield, and I can try to to push him out. Two seconds is a long time in a fight. Two seconds is a long time. He may just be pouring on the herd on you though if you push. So you have to be very careful with that. So if he charges me and I sidestep and I push him away, I could do that, right? You could push with the shield. Right, and that fall that could fall under uh, at least two of the strategy categories. Okay, the push. Right. Also, I can use a push with my with my sword as I strike out. Right. Remember um, what we were talking about um, principles of I thirty three. Right. My sword and my shield act as one. Uh, the reason why we want to do that is it creates. If I want to create a bind, right, I can end up trapping his sword right now he just beat me to it now he's trapped my sword in the bind and now he's gonna come and now he's got me right okay so we'll okay one, one more one more now um, the last thing is called the peekaboo now in order to do the peekaboo you need to understand triangle steps so I'm just gonna show it to the camera Really quick, so Zane, can you just stand right there? Give me some room. Off to the side. Yeah, so, you know, it is important when you are attacking that you lead with your sword foot, okay? You need to lead with your sword foot. Now, as I attack, right, and they're coming at me, right, maybe I haven't launched my attack yet, but it's important to have your sword foot forward. When they come at me, right, what the peekaboo, the principle of it is, is that I'm going to shift my center line over here. So that their target, their target is here. But if I can move here, they're off target. And my shield is going to help them stay off target. Right? So I'm here. They're striking at me here. I take a triangle step and I move their sword. I make sure that the sword doesn't change direction. So I'm here, peekaboo, and now I could strike either with my uh, short edge or strong edge, right? And then, of course, back again just reversing it, right? And we call that a peekaboo, right? So I'm here, I peekaboo, I'm applying pressure to their attack here as I strike this way. And then of course, back again, I could do the same thing, right? So if I'm here for some reason, and they're there and they're striking me, I could peekaboo and hit them like that, okay? So six things, right? We've got, we've got uh, blocks, hooks, wings, pushes, traps, and peekaboos. And those are the six main things, main divisions, uh, main tactics you could use with your shield. Okay, guys, uh, I hope this was instructional for you. I'm Coach Nate with the Bladefit Academy. And I am Zane with the Bladefit Academy. Thanks for joining us, guys. I hope you have a great day, and uh, the future is bright. So October 3rd, once again, is going to be the uh, 2020 International Tournament in... Moscow, Russia. But for now, I'll see you on the Zoom call. Bye-bye. See you next time.